Hey guys, um, welcome to episode 2. Um, today we're just going to be talking about how after you've basically used the dimensions you got from uh, the the uh, rocket propulsion elements book, after you use all those formulas and you receive an output, you should get um, about these, uh, just kind of this geometry. Uh, your numbers will obviously not be the exact same. Um, the CAT I'm using is Fusion 360 just because it's drive based, it's really useful, and it's very nice CAT. I've gotten used to it. And uh, as you can see, yeah, I've put in all my dimensions as parameters. So if I ever wanted to change, for example, the chamber length, then I could just go under modify, change parameters, and then I could just modify from there. So I wouldn't have to redraw everything, basically. Um, so yeah. Um, this is just the basic sketch. It's not very hard. This would be the chamber radius, chamber length, uh, length of converging nozzle, length of the diverging nozzle. Uh, this area, this length is the radius of the throat, and this is the radius of the exit. So um, after you've gotten all that sketched, um, it should be pretty trivial because the trigonometry should already be laid out for you to you can kind of double check yourself with trig so you can check if your angles and everything are right for my converging nozzle I'm using 45 degree half angle and converging is 45 degrees and diverging is 15 degrees which are which seem to be industry standards so after you have this what's called a conical nozzle laid out I'm just going to show you today how to do a parabolic approximation um, of your nozzle so you can make it kind of a bell nozzle it's a lot more efficient and it's what basically all rocket engines use today now actually the parabolic approximation method was first uh, derived was first made by uh, professor Rao I think from 1958 and his approximation method um, was basically just very simple a couple of splines and um, using some control points now this is kind of rough if you really want to go pro you could use what's called the method of characteristics it involves like differential calculus and a bunch of other crap that basically um, it's very advanced yes you get more efficient more efficiency out of it but for all intents and purposes you only get like one percent more efficiency um, at the most so we're not going to do that here i'm just going to show you the approximation method because Unless you really need to squeeze every second of specific impulse out of your engine, you really don't need to worry about the method of characteristics. So, yeah, you, you have your conical nozzle here, and the first step you want to do is basically you select a line, a construction line, construction line. you start at the throat, and you want to go up 1.5 times the radius of the throat. So, shoot, throat radius, there you go. So it should go up to about there. Now you can just make a, you can make an arc or a circle, it doesn't really matter. The point is you want it to intersect um, with the with the point you just made and the throat radius. And basically you can just, yeah, you can see that you make an arc or a circle, it doesn't matter. And for 1.5 times the radius, you want to go into the converging section. So we're just going to do 90 degrees. Here we've gone 90 degrees, and because the geometry of the converging nozzle doesn't really affect the the uh, efficiency of your engine that much, it doesn't really have that much of an effect as long as it's like smooth enough. It's pretty much good. Um, we can just kind of play around, just try to make it um, try to make it smooth. So the way I like to do is basically get to the midpoint. You see that triangle. Uh, fusion basically tells you, oh, that's the midpoint of the arc. So you get the midpoint, and you just click and hold, and you can just, well, you actually, yeah. So actually, let's hold off on the click and hold um, for a moment. Basically, you just start at the midpoint. Uh, you want to press tab, 135 degrees. That's basically 45 degrees. So there you go. You can see that the um, right here around here uh, when you have 135 degrees you see that's a circle and a line that means tangent so it's a tangent line and it's at the midpoint that's what we want because our half angle is 45 degrees go ahead and construction that 
And next step, what I like to do is just basically measure this length, basically. So you can go to inspect here, here, oops, inspect here, and uh, well, that's not very accurate. So we can actually do is just go into sketch, and select a point. Um, just place two points right there so we can snap to it next time so then you come back to inspect this and you can select these two points and you see that the distance which itself point oh one three meters so now that you have point oh one three meters you can just go in the other direction point oh one three meters there you go and now that you have one two and three these three points, what you can do is type S, that takes up the search for shortcuts, and just type in spline. You want the control point spline because it's tangent to your control points. Uncheck construction so you're actually making a line, and you just select the uh, three points one, two, and three. Click check, and now you have a pretty nice um, curvature. It just comes in and inflection point here comes to the throat. Now, when it comes to the diverging nozzle, you have to be a lot more careful um, because the diverging nozzle is, really affects your uh, specific impulse, really affects your efficiencies. So what you want to do, go to sketch again. You ha basically have the same procedure. You want to go up 0 0.382 times the radius of the throat. Takes you to about there. Press enter again, and yeah, you can see here. There you go to confirm. And now you just make another arc. Um, arc, center point arc. Select the point you just made with the throat. Oops. Press escape to do to escape whatever you were doing. It's like these two points. Oh shoot. I think I selected a line. Center point arc, one, two, there you go. And we can just do 40, 90 degrees again, even though we don't really need to go to 90 degrees. So you can see how this kind of cuts out of there. That's actually what you want. Um, and now we have a parameter in rocket nozzles that's called um, the inflection angle, which is basically at what angle does this curve turn into, uh, does it inflect into basically concave down, it just it just goes the other way. Where does it inflect? Um, 30 degrees means along that curve, wherever it's 30 degrees to the normal, so to the x-axis, um, we want to inflect because that's around the standard for inflection angles. So now this is the trick with tangents. If you don't, if you're not using like a midpoint or anything, you just want to know along this arc, the tangents, you can just go to the arc, uh, Make a snap onto the arc. It's a bit harder than I thought. Fusion is uh, not snapping for some reason. Am I selecting? Yeah, I'm selecting the. <laughs> yeah, I was selecting the uh, measurement, not the actual thing. So you got to watch out for that. So you see how there's an X that's snapping onto the arc. You click and hold, and you see how it kind of. It's kind of weird, but you can see how the point, you can see that, um, whoops, yeah, turn on my graphics card. <laughs> um, you can see how there's a circle and then a tangent line, that means tangent. So now you can see that if I tab, you can see at that I'm editing the angles. And as I said, I want 30 degrees. So while you're still holding, you just type in 30 degrees, 30, 30. There you go. And then you can just press enter. And that just makes at 30 degrees. Um, yeah. So, you know, this, the length is still technically undefined, but that doesn't really matter at this point because we just need it to be just, just long enough so that we can intersect it with another point later, which I will explain. So now that you have that line, now you have to figure out your exit um, half angle. So basically, after the 
bell extends and starts converging back, what is the angle with the normal at that point? And for the most part, um, when you're doing a parabolic approximation, you get a shorter nozzle than your conical nozzle that you're basing it off of. So you can define it as, for example, a 60% nozzle would just be 60% of the length of the conical nozzle, um, 80%, 100%. We're going to do a 100% nozzle because our length isn't that much of an issue. Normally, length is only an issue on upper stage engines, but since it's a sea level engine, then our length doesn't matter too much. So what you can do is just do a construction line, just make a normal line. Yeah, it doesn't matter what the length really is. Then you can make a line and you can see how there's a degree. You can just do 8.5 degrees. 8.5 degrees is around the standard. Um, oh yeah, it seems like I accidentally did a constraint. So we'll just try that again. 8.5, there you go. Enter, yeah, it's the length doesn't really matter. The point of this is so that you can basically continue this line. You can see how there's a blue dotted line. Um, yeah, you can see how there's a blue dotted line and you just continue that blue dotted line until it basically intersects with the line you made earlier with 30 degrees inflection. And wherever they intersect, you can just, um, you can just make a point there. Okay, and then you can make these lines construction because we're not technically using that line for anything. We're not actually making the geometry out of that line. This line is well, you can make the construction. And now we have our three points. So again, you type S to search for any shortcuts, spline, control point spline. And all you have to do is select where the, where the tangent was seems to be there. Um, select the intersection point and select the exit point. Let's check. And yeah, there you go. Now you have your parabolic approximation. Um, excuse me, there was really no math involved. You could do this on paper, but since uh, Fusion has all these great features where you can basically just sketch it from here. And yeah, basically that's it. Um, now you have your parabolic approximation ready. If you really want to be fancy, you can just revolve it to see how it looks. You can just select this face and this. Select the axis to be here. And there you go. Now you have your very beautiful approximated parabolic um, rocket nozzle. So hope that was helpful. And um, Thank you. I'll see you next time.